This is your anchor, T Mac, reporting from Spartan TV, Miami. Over the last few weeks, we had a lot going on, like the lower and middle school buoyancy cups, the school wide play, and some rumors floating around about the bannings. First up, we have our man Ryan Clark with the science behind the buoyancy cup. Let's take a look. My name is Ryan Clark, reporting from Spartan TV, Miami, and I'm at the pool during buoyancy cup hour. Well, the Buoyancy Cup actually has a pretty long history here at Country Day. I believe it first started, I've been here about 10 or 11 years, no, 11 or 12 years, and it was going on even back then. The Buoyancy Cup happens every year, but not everyone thinks about the science behind it. Kids have to design a boat, which is made out of certain materials, to see if they can make it buoyant so that it won't sink and it would float. Uh, primarily in this competition, if boats are watertight, they float. And if they're not watertight, they sink. Uh, in real life, it has to do with more complicated buoyancy type things, but not, not in this. It has to do with buoyancy, which means if something is less dense or more dense than water, whether it would sink or float. However, the upper school used to hold buoyancy cup. I did two. My junior year, uh, it was optional, um, and we did pretty well. And my senior year uh, in AP Physics, it was for a test grade. We did not do very well. Uh, our boat broke apart right away, exposing many flaws. How my group did our project is we took tubes and we covered the holes so that, that there would be air for buoyancy. On top, we have a cardboard box, which is flattened with duct tape, where we can sit, and then we have three paddles, and our theme is Starbucks. Buoyancy Cup isn't really about winning. People do it for extra credit, but also we can just do it for fun. Some people get disqualified if we don't follow the specific rules, but still, it's really fun because you still get to participate. I think what makes our boat special is uh, we're the only person who did Snapchat and just like wearing makeup and stuff. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's what makes us unique. Well, we're going to try hard, as hard as we can, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll succeed. It's not about the boat, it's about the people in it. The Pointy Cup has a lot to do with science. And friendship. I'm Ryan Clark from Sporting TV Miami, signing out. Bye-bye. Wow, I didn't know the Pointy Cup had that much to do with science and skill. Next up, Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Despite its catchy music and universal theme, there was some controversy about the play. Let's see what Danny Judge has to say about the last play in the Garner Center. I'm Daniela Judge, reporting for Spartan TV Miami from the Garner Center. This center has been transformed into Egypt for Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamco, and it will be the last school show performed here. What's more, actors from all divisions and the music's being played live. This show was performed April 4th, 5th, and 6th. This year, we wanted to do an all-school musical to um, bid a sweet farewell to the Garner Center as we prepare for the CFA, the Center for, for, for the Performing Arts. I think Joseph is a great play to send off Garner because we've done it so many times at the school, to my knowledge, in the past, and it's just a great way to end it. I don't really think it is. I think they should do something more theatrical, like Peter Pan. I think that because we're a private school that's non-denominational, um, we shouldn't be doing a play based on the Bible. So it's also a play that not a lot of kids uh, can follow through with. It's kind of a hard play to follow through with if you're not really quite interested in what's going on. So I think that's kind of difficult. <laughs> Every day is a surprise simply because um, I'm getting to know the students, I'm getting to know the production staff, um, certainly getting to know how things work here at MCDS, but also um, it's giving me a true look into the future of theater here at um, Miami Country Day. The set was incredible, and I can't wait for my third play at Miami Country Day School next year. This is Daniela, reporting for Spartan TV Miami. See you next time. In an update to the story, we learned that Mr. Valdez left the school after the play. Well, that's news for another story. Lastly, we have Sid Brown talking to Mr. Mathis and Mr. Finney about the rumors we heard about the recent middle school bannings. Let's hear the real story. I'm Sid from Spartan TV Miami. There's been a lot of talk among students about things being banned, like fidget spinners, slime, and selling stuff on campus. I think that some of the bans on fidget spinners and slime are unfair because those are what makes students concentrate during class. 
Have you heard of the recent bannings yet? No. I don't really like the bannings because they're banning too much stuff. I mean, I think since it's a school, I mean, they have the right to ban because we go here. Let's talk to Mr. Finney and Mathis to set the record straight. Okay, so let's take one at a time. The slime was coming to school sometimes in little balls, and a lot of time it was that way, and it really didn't become a problem until in some case, cases um, in classes, in fact, one that I was sitting in on, uh, the ball broke and got all over the place, the, all over the student, all over the chair, all over the floor, and had to be, cleaning people had to come in and clean it up. And then we were finding it in other places on the campus. So unfortunately, because it was literally causing damage on the campus, and uh, we had to ban it. The slime, you know, as as things come around, we have to make a decision about where the things are going to start affecting the cleanliness and the learning environment. And as I spoke to, especially the sixth and seventh grade teams, they told me that it was really becoming an issue. And because of that, as I talked to them, they really encouraged me that this should be. And because the slime has no purpose, it has no positive purpose other than a play thing, I thought it best just to get rid of it completely uh, to support the teachers so that we can keep a clean learning environment. Okay, the other one was selling stuff. Um, the, uh, that's in the handbook. It's always been in the handbook, and you can't sell anything for personal gain or profit on the campus. You can only sell things for altruistic reasons, which means um, for a nonprofit organization or a charity. And and even for that, you must get permission from Mr. Finney to do it and uh, arrange a time to do it so that people aren't conflicting with each other. And unfortunately, that's what happens. Sometimes the actions of a few uh, you know, eliminate things for everybody, but that's what happens in a community. Mr. Finney assured me that fidget spinners are not banned, but some teachers don't allow them. After watching this, I hope you understand that some things are banned and some things are in the handbook. So, don't forget to read your handbook. Thanks for watching. I'm Sid from Spartan TV Miami, signing out. So don't even think about bringing slime on school campus. Well, since I'm the sports guy, we can't finish this show without our sports update. Did you know our middle school boys tennis is playing a championship game on April 28th? Let's with, wish them luck so they can bring the trophy home. This is T-Mac reporting for Spartan TV Miami, and I'll catch you later.